Man, got around. I'm D7 back here. And today, I have tales of glory and victory that will demonstrate how to live according to beast mode law by adapting a savage mindset with a barbaric perspective in our world that is constantly changing and trying to fool you. Hey guys, in this life, man, you gotta realize, man, sometimes, dude, the reality that you're experiencing is like going into one of those, like, what's it called, man, when you go to the carnival, man, and then you go into this, uh, it's like a house, but it's got the many different weird mirrors and stuff, bro. You, it's like in the movie, it's like in the movie Us, man, when the one lady, the little girl what goes into the, I guess it's called the house of mirrors or whatever. And then there's another little girl that looks like her and they switch places, right? And it's just, I forget what the, the, the name of the place is, but it's just, it's, it's just, it can psych you out, man. It's like in the movie with Bruce Lee, Enter the Dragon, when he went into the halls of mirrors, because sometimes what you see is not really true. It's almost like a hologram. And uh, that's why I wanted to get straight into this video, guys, to uh, take you down a trip inside of your head. If you could just go and do like a third party analysis with me. But what that means is you step outside of your emotions and feelings and you look at things objectively. And I want you to step back into your life like I used to do when I was in the belly of the beast. And I would step back into my life. And there's this movie called The Butterfly Effect, guys. And what I like about this movie, you ever had like a bad experience in your life? You say to yourself, hey, man, if I could do it over again, I wouldn't have done X, Y, Z, right? I would have done one, two, three. And then do you actually play out in your mind like what you think would be because it's actually hypothetical. But I think it's good to do those kind of exercises because then when you come back to the present time and you experience maybe similar situations, you know, to handle yourself in a different way, guys. And so that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about that experience is the best teacher in life, guys. And that's why it's called experientialism. Because it's one thing, dude, to like read, you know, read books or listen to audio cassettes, man, or watch videos, dude. And even to get a coach, bro. But it's a whole nother thing when you experience it yourself. And that's what I tried to share with you guys, man, the importance of having proper mentorship and leadership so that the person that you're looking up to or you're investing your time and energy to mold you, right, to mentor you, is taking you on positive experiences so that the guy can, like, for example, a mentor or a teacher is like a, it's like a scout. And the scout takes you into the jungle. So you get to experience the jungle. And then he even tells you, like, how to use a hatchet to chop away where, you know, chop a path, whatever. But, you know, he, he knows how to teach you to identify quicksand and, and different, like, uh, false chasms where you can look, look at this grass, but it's actually a hole. And that's why it's, it's important to have somebody that can take you down life's path and help you to detour from the experiences and the bad things that can happen to you that can really detour your life and, like, stop you from even growing because then you're trapped in the bubble. And the bubble I want to talk to you guys about is the bubble called felonies, man. And it's really important, man, that you guys understand that's why it's important to you know, get this stuff out of your system when you're young, dude. It, you know, like for a lot of guys, they call it sowing your wild oats. Like when you're young, you're supposed to just travel a lot, sleep with a lot of different women, play a lot of different sports, experience a lot of different characters. And so you can make mistakes and bump your head so that by the time you're 18, you pretty much got a level of understanding of life. And that's why I wanted to talk to you guys about my, uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about my, my Patreon channel, guys, and why it's so important and valuable because I put a lot of time into this guys just so you guys know even though I was an IT professional I was back I was actually was called a network engineer so I would build the back-end equipment the way I got into IT when I got out of the out of prison or here to known as the belly of the beast I was a big strong dude and back then the servers were like 500 pounds they were called database servers and you had to put them in the rack so in, in California for earthquake seismic reasons you have to put the first server on the bottom of the rack with the battery so that if an earthquake hits, the heaviest stuff's on the bottom and it stabilizes the rack, right? 
And so I'm not trying to be racist or anything, but the the uh, the Caucasian dudes and the Asian dudes and the Indian dudes and the, that were tech guys, because back when I was a tech guy, there wasn't a lot of African-American dudes or Hispanic dudes in tech. It was mostly Asian and Caucasian and Indian. And guys that are in the tech, they never were athletes back then. And they were just little geeky dudes that played games all the time and, and drank uh, drunk cola and ate junk food and pizza and, and masturbated a lot and watched porn. Whereas I came from a physical background, so I would be able to pick those servers up like nothing back then. And they liked me because I can put them in a rack, you know, the bottom, middle, top. I could even jerk it up here to my shoulders and put it in the rack, right? So that's how I got my, you know, my start into IT, right? So the whole thing is this, guys. It's like through my experiences, man, I got to see different types of guys and different types of people, and they – um I don't know, they embraced me and showed me a different side of life that was less physical and more cerebral. So I put a lot of time into my Patreon channel because what I did is I took all of my experiences, dude, from being, you know, physical, cerebral, emotional, a criminal, an intellectual, a sophisticated dude, a military dude, a martial arts dude, and I put it all into the Patreon so that through these pages, guys, you guys can experience positive things that I'm sharing with you without going through the negative things of not knowing what to do and being lost. So I want to share with you guys what I've done with my Patreon over here. And so as you can see, this you know this is when I first started doing uh, YouTube, guys. I would have a mask on because I was working in IT and I couldn't let the you know HR policies find out that I was saying things you know about society and women and stuff like that because in IT they check your social media and so I, I came up with this nomaker OG Silverback actually the German dude gave me this but as we go through here I want to show you what I got going on man so here the first tier guys this is uh this is the the, the prison workouts basically and so basically you know a lot of young guys man are interested dude I got to tell you something guys I get so many emails, you know, and the, <laughs> this was funny because on YouTube, I, I get a lot of trolls talking about, hey, why are you talking about prison stuff, you know, and, you know, you should stop thinking about prison, let it go, live, go let it, leave it behind you. That's what I want to tell you in this video. Some things that you experience in life are so horrific, dude, and just so degradative. It's part of your psyche from now on, bro. That's why I've ever seen a dude's been – a victim of a concentration camp, dude, or he was a prisoner of war, he's never the same again, dude. So I get a lot of emails, man, guys asking me, hey, how come prisoners are so swole, man? And, you know, how did he get swole with no weights? And how did he get swole with the crappy food and all that? And they even got people making up these, these theories that they got steroids in prison, right? So what I did was uh, my first tier is a $5 a month tier. It goes straight into prison workouts, man. Raw and uncut prison workouts, dude. I got that in there. I suggest you guys that want to get yourself physically looking like a prisoner, dude, without having to go to prison. That's a good tier for you to start on. The next one, guys, is the um, is the printing prison fighting fitness. And I wanted to share this with you, like, and I talked I talked to a lot of guys on YouTube and the coaching calls and my PayPal. And it's one thing to work out. You can work out and get big muscles and be fit, bro. But it's a whole nother thing to have fighting fitness. So I made a tier for that. It's called prison fighting fitness. And I go into the difference between just being fit and being able to fight and be fit. You know, and I, I, I'm going to give you many different examples of rolling in jujitsu or fighting in karate. Or if a dude rides a bike a lot, he's really fit. Doesn't mean he can throw a lot of punches. So then the next tier is called the prison weight training, dude. And this goes into, like, why prisoners that have weights, bro, they come out really big and muscular as opposed to guys on the street who have been doing lifting weights for decades, bro. And they're, they're uh, dude, they don't get half as big. And then even there's guys on the street that take steroids and growth hormone and all that don't even look like guys coming out of prison. And I share with you why. So the next one here is my prison fights, guys. This is 25 a month. So basically, if you notice on the prison genre on YouTube, a lot of guys, you know, talk about the fights in prison, this and that. I go very into detail describing the fights that I was either in or I witnessed and describe the in graphic detail, you know, how they went down and, and my thoughts on it. 
And so then the next one is this prison power building. And so when I remember, I remember when I went to prison, dude, when I was at level three and four, and even at level five, which I call reception, we got to work out. And the prisoners were exceptionally strong. I was a, I was actually an international level powerlifter, but I noticed the way that the prisoners lifted. It gave them an unusual amount of strength, and I'm going to break down why it is. I'm going to show you the actual workouts that I noticed, being that I was actually went to clinics to learn how to do uh, weightlifting, Olympic lifting, and powerlifting. But then I seen how the prisoners lifted. I even went to schools in the military about strength training. So I'm very, you know, very well versed in exercise physiology, kinesiology, geometry, all of that. But I noticed prisoners worked out a certain way with the weights. I'm going to talk to you about that. They, they did a thing called power building where their muscles were big and strong. Because you'll notice a lot of guys on the street, some bodybuilders do, they just all show like they got big muscles from whatever they're taking or doing, but they're not strong. But then you have a lot of guys that are strong, but their muscles aren't big. In prison, they put them together. The next one here is my prison fights combatives. And what I actually do here is I actually discuss the moves that you should do if you were in a, a if you're in a prison fight or if you're fighting a dude that's been to prison because they fight different than guys on the street. In prison, there's no rules. They even fight dirtier than street fighters. So I think that's a very important tier. The next one, guys, this is the prison combatives breakdown. So I break down the actual moves, dude. Like I actually break it down so that you have an understanding of not just what to do, but why to do it and how it works, like the physiology behind it. This one here is my pimpology to dominate women. And the reason I made this tier, guys, is because I have a pimping channel. And then whenever I put up some very provocative, very powerful information about female psychology, how to dominate women, YouTube either strikes me mad and then I can't afford to have another strike or they take the video down dude or they don't allow me to post videos for two three four weeks bro so I got the pimping channel here for those of you because see this is what happens at Patreon guys can complain all day long over at YouTube man oh why you post these videos I don't like them but on Patreon the people pay for what they want and that's the main thing guys this one next one here is is um combatives instruction Sometimes, guys, when you watch videos about how to do martial arts, or even if you read a book, there's there's certain fine nuances you really don't understand. So what I do is a Zoom call, and I help you to understand the finite nuances. I'll walk you through it so that you really understand how to move, how to breathe, how to flow, how to strike, how to evade. Very popular. So then we go down to here, guys, and uh, this is... Um, this is my information technology track. A lot of guys hit me up because I was actually a vice president in information technology on my way to becoming the chief technology officer until I hit another bump in the road, which taught me that even if you successfully get out of prison, you can still fall into some traps out here because I wasn't aware of female nature. And I learned a very valuable lesson going from $300,000 a year to homeless to lock back up in the county jail and the madness there. But I teach you how to get information that technology job, man, you know, making six figures. This is a very good one. A lot of people asked me about it. So I went ahead and put that together for you. And then the last two guys is I got to meet up and train for a day. And for this uh, tier right here, man, you can fly out to where I'm living. I'm currently going to be living in Los Angeles, which is a, a nice city to visit. A lot of people like to go to L.A. for Hollywood, Beverly Hills, Venice Beach. LA is just a, it's got a, it's got its own lifeblood, dude. And you get to spend a day with me and I actually walk you through how I get up in the morning and I do my martial arts and then I run and then I lift weights, man. And then I stretch and then how I just do my business dealings. Like you get to meet up with me and train. We get to hang out. I introduce you to my social circle, my network circle. And this one here is the, um, is a three day level of boot camp, guys. And what happens is you, you fly in on a Friday. And we work out and train and we do martial arts like you and I do martial arts together. We're not trying to kill each other. I'm not trying to kill you in a workout, but I want to correct your form, show you the right way to work out. I would then go ahead and analyze the way you dress, the way you talk, the way you carry yourself. Because at the end of the day, guys, you can make all the money in the world. You can be all the savage in the world. But if you don't know how to carry yourself and to speak and to dress and to act to attract the type of woman that you want in your life, you can end up like what happened to me when I was making $300,000 a year. 
I didn't understand there was gold digger type women that will play this comedian act on you and get in your life and destroy it, take the take the foundation out from under you. So I got that there. So I just wanted to share that with you guys because I think it's very important in this day and age where you have information readily available, uh, sometimes the best way to expedite your, your path to greatness, right, or your path to cash is to associate with a mentor that's going to walk you step by step through the different aspects of being a man so that you can go ahead and get there quickly, dude, instead of wasting years, like not knowing what to do, flapping around like a fish and being lost. So I was very excited to share that with you guys, man. So I'm, um, I revamped that one to walk you guys through that. And I look forward to you guys coming over there because um, my main priority now is going to be the Patreon because what I've figured out is the guys who really believe in themselves are willing to invest in themselves because in this life, guys, you get out of this life what you put into it and there is no free rise, guys. And you got to look at, you know, what is it, what is it worth to you to learn some things that can help you to get to where you want to go very quickly and very efficiently and most importantly, without bumping your head or doing making costly mistakes that can devastate your life so irrevocably that you can never recover and never achieve the greatness that you have locked inside of your body.